In this Cardano update, we'll be looking at Jed, which is a new stablecoin just launched on Cardano. Yes, a native stablecoin for Cardano. It's very exciting, but how does Jed actually work? How does the mechanism work? Should you get involved with this? Is it risky or is it good to use? I'll go over that throughout this video. Cardano is building a lot of products and services right now. They're launching all at the same time, which is great news for the Cardano ecosystem. So we'll go over that throughout this video. Timestamps for everything down below. Firstly then, let's look at Jed. What is this thing? What's well, a US dollar stablecoin on Cardano? It's a decentralized stablecoin. And I explain what that is throughout this video. We can actually see now that Jed is already listed on a few of Cardano's main exchanges. Jed is going to be a US dollar stablecoin, meaning that anything that's paired with it is essentially trading against dollars in this case. So we now have ADA and Jed. So if you want to actually sell out of your ADA, you want to go back into a stablecoin, then you can do that right here. There's a lot of other uses for a stablecoin within an ecosystem. And so I'll go over some of the pros and cons of Jed. And if you should think about actually selling out your ADA for Jed, if you do want to do that, or whether it's actually better to maybe send it into a centralized exchange and still use USDT or something like that. So firstly, Jed is listed now on exchanges. So People are trading this thing and it is going to improve liquidity across Cardano DEXs in my opinion, so very good. You can see a spike in exchange volume around the launch as well. So um, we've got around $100,000 worth of ADA Jed uh, exchange in terms of volume on MinSwap. And if we go over to Wing Riders, we actually have a few different pairs now. We have Jed and IUSD. Now IUSD is a different type of stablecoin. Uh, again, you have over collateralization there. So you have some crypto assets, including ADA, that back the value of that IUSD. Jed is actually quite similar, but it's a different mechanism. And we have $65,000 of trading volume here. We also have ADA Shen and ADA Jed, as you can see. So these are the different uh, assets within the Jed ecosystem, actually doing a really decent amount of trade right here. So um, seems to be some trading volume here for Shen and Jed and explain what those are now. Jed is known as an over collateralized stablecoin. It's not an algorithmic stablecoin. It's not a fiat backed stablecoin. This is how it works, which I'll show you right here in some of the pros and cons. Before we get into that, there is an update coming for the crypto course over the next week or so. I'm adding a bunch of videos and updates and outlooks for this year to the crypto course, free for everyone in the course already. There is a price rise coming when that update occurs though. I'm also adding an affiliate program to the course as well. If you're interested in that, just make sure to follow my Twitter. Everyone in the course, you'll get Get some updates in the private groups as well. Check the links below if you are interested. You can see all of the details there. But getting back to Jed, with every asset, there needs to be some sort of backing for it, especially with stable coins. And so you have USDT, USDC, BUSD. These are one for one fiat backed. And so the buyer of last resort is the dollar in the bank, right? So you have this crypto thing. And why does that have value? Well, there's a dollar in a bank account and you can always go to the protocol, swap in this crypto asset and get that dollar back. And so that's why they are so effective at keeping their peg. Now with um, crypto backed stable coins, how does Jed keep its dollar peg? Well, Jed, as you can see here, does have an Oracle that uh, is um, you know, owned by Coty or run by Coty. Coty is just a separate company that runs this within the Cardano ecosystem. So they have an Oracle right here trying to keep Jed around you know, uh, $1 in terms of its peg to other risk assets. There may be many other market participants as well who actually try and arbitrage all of these price differences on different exchanges, right? So that can happen as well. So you get an Oracle and you get arbitrages keeping Jed where it should be. That's market dynamics. But there must be a buyer of last resort for this thing because if you're using this thing, let's say you have Jed, and you're thinking, is it really worth anything, right? If the market believes that there isn't enough actual value backing the value of Jed, then that's when you get bank runs and sell-offs like that. So the way that uh, Jed does it and Coty does it is via this other asset called Shen. Now, Shen, just think of it as just a name for a big wallet full of ADA. So ADA is actually the thing that collateralizes the value of this $1, right? So it's ADA itself, this is a risk asset, it can go up and down in value, and it has a value and it's liquid, so you can sell it and buy it. But if you wanna switch your dollar back into this, you can do that, and ADA is actually used either to lock up as value or to take out as value. 
Now, obviously risk assets, especially crypto are extremely volatile. And so how do you prevent that volatility where you know people lock up a dollar, then the price of ADA goes down and suddenly you've got 50 cents backing a dollar and then you've got, you know, you've got a big problem. The way they do that is just what's known as over collateralization. So for every $1 of Jed that's minted, there has to be way more ADA backing this, 400 to 800%, or we can say around four to $8. So there's at least $4 of Shen in existence for every one ADA, um, you know, when it's minted. Now, this can obviously go up and down in value as well, which is a big risk, which I'll talk about. But as you can see, this is what the protocol does. So if you want to mint Jed, you can do that at no, no problem, right? So you can actually pay one ADA, you get uh, the amount of Jed back. And then, you know, off to the side, you have a bunch of ADA sitting in a wallet as collateral to make sure that the market knows that there's enough money there to back all of this stuff. Now, as you can see here, if there's $8 of ADA for every $1 of Shen, you can see people can't put more dollars, more ADA into Shen. So Shen can only go 800%. Now it can actually go 1000%, it can go higher than this. So just imagine if, you know, there's $8 of ADA for every $1 of Shen, and then the price of ADA goes up 100%. Well, now the collateralization ratio is gonna be way over eight to one because, um, you know, ADA's gone up, right? So this collateralization ratio can actually go way higher, but over 800%, you can't physically use this protocol to put more ADA into the reserve. So as you can see now, the actual reserve is 600%. So you can actually mint Shen and you can do everything. It's working as it should be, right? But if the price of ADA spikes or if a lot of people put money into Shen, it won't let you do this in the protocol. Now you can go to an exchange and you can buy Shen freely. You can buy Jed freely. This is just the protocol itself. It really wants to keep you in, within this level right here. And as you can see below 400%, you can't mint new Jed. And there's a reason for that. So obviously with the collateral right here, we have, let's say $4 for every one Jed. You can't mint more Jed because um, obviously bad actors are gonna try and take this thing out. They're gonna try and mint Jed, which would take collateralization of ADA down. Maybe if the ADA price falls a lot, then you could actually get a situation where Jed isn't backed by actual uh, enough collateral, right? Because let's say it's 400%, so you have $4 of ADA for every $1 of Jed, and then ADA falls by 99%. It's unlikely, but it can happen. And we've seen during bear markets, it can definitely happen. Well, then you have a, a, you know, a problem in that Jed can't be redeemed because there's just nothing left to sell. There's no value left to sell, right? And that's when you have under collateralization and then the whole thing falls apart and you'll get a bank run and on exchanges, Jed will basically be worthless as well because no one will be there buying it for the other assets. So there is still risk here that when you have crypto backed stable coins, the value of the collateral can just go to zero. That is still a risk which is why they try through their uh, research, they think uh, over collateralization of four to 800% is actually enough to weather any, down, any kind of downside and storms during a bear market. That over collateralization gives the protocol a lot of time. If people see the ADA price coming down and they're worried, they should have a lot of time because there's so much collateral locked up in the Shen contracts in terms of ADA that can be sold off to be able to redeem your Jed. So Jed should be redeemable at all times, barring some absolute catastrophe uh, where the ADA price goes down 80, 90% in an extremely short amount of time. But that is a possibility, of course. Uh, Jed stablecoin, as you can see here, you can mint this. So you just have to spend ADA and then get your dollars back. So you know, if you wanna put some ADA in, you can do that, you get charged some fees. Here are the fees if you want to mint Jed. It's a 1.5% mint and burn fee. This is extremely high. It's an egregious fee. You know, most stable coins are completely free to you know, interact with. So if you're looking to get Jed, probably go to an exchange, a decentralized exchange and maybe swap there. You're gonna be paying a much lower fee. It's a very high fee. I assume it will come down over time. Uh, so the fees paid for pe by people minting Jed, as you can see here and burning Jed, those fees go to Shen holders. So that's the incentive for people investing their ADA in Shen is that they can actually 
get the fees of this protocol over time. So they're basically putting their ADA, locking it up in the Shen contract. They're getting fees from this protocol, which is the incentive to get them to put their collateral in this contract, in this wallet, as, as you can think of it, to back this Jed stablecoin. Currently almost 600% more ADA value than uh, Jed outstanding. Here's a comparison of Jed versus the other stable coins on the market. We can think of Jed essentially as the copy paste of the DAI stablecoin on Ethereum. It's basically the same thing, which is a crypto backed stablecoin. Under the hood, they are very different and they have different types of collateral, but you can see they've even put the Jed uh, icon next to DAI here. So think of DAI and Jed pretty much as the same thing, which is having tons of over collateralization of crypto assets backing the, you know, the stablecoin itself. Now, centralized stablecoins, you know, they have a dollar in a bank account. There is a centralized actor here and they can blacklist your wallet or your transactions. That has happened before. Um, but for most normal people, this is really what I would go for because you just don't have to worry about the collateralization or the backing. One dollar backs the one dollar of crypto assets. For most people, we're not going to get our wallets blacklisted for doing anything wrong. But there is the decentralized version, which has some advantages for some people. Now, in terms of Jed, it just uses ADA as collateral, and that's it. In terms of DAI, they actually use other types of collateral. So this is DAI on Ethereum. You can see there's $8 billion of value locked. They have a 140% collateralization ratio rather than Jed, which is supposed to be minimum 400, but it can go below 400. If it's at 400, the ADA price drops 50%, it will go under that ratio. So it can go under, but the protocol doesn't allow you to mint any more Jed uh, if that collateralization, collateralization ratio is under that 400%. But for DAI, we have a lot of USDC in here, which is centralized. You have Ethereum, and then you have some other assets and LP assets right here kind of bringing up. DAI are actually bringing in RWAs, real world assets as well, which is um, you know government debt and things like that. So um, there's a lot more collateralization and different types of assets. This reduces risk, right? Because with Jed, you just have one asset, which is a risk asset, which definitely can go down in value. With DAI, they have much more diversified exposure with you know, different assets, right? And so with Jed, they are actually looking as the protocol evolves to back it with other types of collateral. We envision wrapped Bitcoin and wrapped ETH all on Cardano to be used to mint Jed. Um, so that's going to reduce risk a lot. At the moment, it's it's early on and they're just using Cardano because that's really all they have on the blockchain. When wrapped Bitcoin and wrapped ETH come in, they can actually use that as well and kind of reduce specific risk. That would be a great addition, I think, to the protocol. What I want to call out here as well is this statement, which I do believe is false. Normally, over collateralized stable coins are less capital efficient, but Jed is different. It fixes that flow with the addition of the Shen model. This is completely untrue. Uh, over collateralized stable coins are the, exactly the same as Jed. Jed is not more capital efficient at all. In fact, it's even worse than DAI. DAI's over collateralization is 140%, and people argue that this is holding it back in terms of its growth because you need you know 100 you need one dollar forty just to mint one dollar. So over collateralization can't grow an ecosystem. With Jed, you're looking at four dollars for every dollar. It's not solving anything. This is a false statement, I believe. And so just to be aware of, Jed is not going to grow massively when it has this 400% backing. You need a lot of capital just to mint one Jed. And so I believe it's going to be a small protocol and a small circulation market cap coin. Coty also mentioned they'll use Jed within their own payments gateway called Coty Pay, an app and crypto gateway that allows merchants and e-commerce platforms and nonprofits to receive Jed as a form of payment. I really did, I don't think that product will work at all. I think it's definitely the wrong way to go. Um, it's not gonna take off the ground if they're using Jed. No one really wants to use these crypto backed stable coins for actually accepting as a payment. And by the way, they're not regulated anyway. And so no actual merchants are gonna be able to accept these things. Um, it's just not gonna work out. I don't know why they're doing this. The way that DAI actually uses their protocol is essentially as a way for um, asset owners within crypto that have wrapped Bitcoin or wrapped ETH 
they can put those assets on the DAI protocol and borrow dollars against them. Many institutions and investors and market makers need dollar liquidity occasionally, but they don't want to sell their actual assets to get that dollar liquidity, so they take a loan out against that. We've seen lots of uh, institutions use this as well within crypto. You can see 2.2 billion is managed on DAI. So that's essentially wrapped Bitcoin and wrapped ETH that's locked up in these contracts, and then you can borrow DAI against that. And so you mint the DAI, you pay a fee. Um, so that's a much better use case. It's more like um, an infrastructure that allows for much more liquidity. It allows for um, you know asset prices to be priced much more efficiently as well. That's really what Coty should be doing. I think the payments gateway is way you know going down the wrong alley, but we'll see if they can be successful with that. As a normal retail investor, should you hold Jed if you're just looking to be safe in dollars? I don't think you need to take the risk, to be honest. Both Jed and I, you have to worry about the protocol and collateralization ratios and liquidations. It's just not really where you should be as a retail investor. These work absolutely fine. And for most people, they're not going to be censoring your transactions. These aren't available on Cardano, so you might want to wait for Anzans to launch USDA, which is going to be a one-for-one -one fiat backed stablecoin, dollars in a bank account to back it. That's the one I would hold if I'm going to hold dollars on the Cardano blockchain, because I don't want to worry about you know, very new protocols that could potentially have something go wrong. Whilst I wouldn't use Jed, it is great to see more options and infrastructure being built, including lending protocols and trading. So very good news in the Cardano ecosystem right now. If you are interested in the Crypto Investor course, an update is coming for this very soon. Link in description for that where you can find out more details. I'm James with Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.